on an unusually warm February day, I found myself in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania, visiting not one but two struggling malls. After an unexpected stopover at Montgomery Mall, I headed to my originally intended destination, Plymouth Meeting Mall. I was promised some 1980s vibes, and I saw that, plus a little bit of 1990s and just enough 21st century mixed in. I entered Plymouth Meeting Mall via Dix, which occupies only the lower level of the former Macy's Anchor. Above it are the combined anchor tenants of Burlington, Michaels, and Edge Fitness. This mall features one of the largest mall fountains I have seen in a long time, as well as a functioning carousel, both of which I feature a lot in this video. The mall opened in 1966 and in 1970, a major fire destroyed the Lit Brothers Anchor and one-third of the inline mall tenants. The fire started in a lighting unit in a storefront display case. No less than six fire departments and over 200 firefighters responded to the scene and stayed for two days to douse hot spots in the cold January weather. The Rouse Company built the mall and sold it to its present owner, Priet, in 2003. From 2007 to 2009, a worthwhile investment was made in the property to add outlying tenants, most of which are restaurants. The mall itself has 952,000 square feet of retail space and has a large atrium-like interior, complete with a fountain and a two-level carousel which is currently operating. Like most malls its age, it's undergone many changes over the years. The palm trees and curved wooden slats over the top walkway very much scream 1980s, but I'm not sure when that aesthetic was actually installed. The mall lists having eight anchors, seven occupied, one vacant, but most of those are subdivisions of the original two anchors with an additional three floor Boscovs and a junior anchor of Lego Discovery Center, which took the place of some of the food court. Whole Foods and AMC theaters round out the remainder of the anchors. Facing competition 10 miles away from the majorly upscale King of Prussia Mall and its hundreds of tenants, the smaller Plymouth Meeting Mall is definitely struggling. It's in a very densely populated area 17 miles northwest of Center City, Philadelphia. In addition to its nearest competition, it's also in an overmalled area full of other competitive retail. The outlying restaurants may survive, but the longtime future of this place as an interior mall could one day become endangered. I was there just after lunchtime on a Thursday, but I did not see a huge quantity of shoppers. I didn't encounter any mall security, and given its aesthetic and the other people I saw photographing the fountain, I would suspect it's normally an easy place to take video undisturbed. Plymouth Meeting Mall's Wikipedia page is full of detailed information on the property. To anyone interested in visiting this mall, I would recommend coupling it up with another stop at one of the other many malls in the general area. Given all the quality restaurants in the general area of this mall, I just might recommend using this as a lunch or dinner stop. In no uncertain terms, the fountain at this mall was definitely the high point. As I'm sure it's fairly obvious, I'm rather enamored by this fountain, and it's too bad that it's such a long drive for me to be able to see. None of the malls in the Lehigh Valley have fountains, and fountains in general are becoming a dying breed inside of malls.
So after locals assured me that the PA Turnpike bills drivers without easy pass by license plate, and given all the heck I drove through to get there via back roads, I decided to take the toll road home. I am not a city person and have no immediate plans to return to the greater Philadelphia area this year in spite of there being many malls I haven't yet explored. My current plans are to head north and west, up to and including Vermont and possibly even Canada. Wherever I go, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.